Hello and welcome back to Random Librarian here on YouTube. So this is going to be a little bit of a different video than what I normally do because I'm not talking about books. I am talking about snacks that I hope to eat <laughs> while reading. So this is a little box that I got from Sakurako because I saw it was, you know, advertised to me on Instagram and I have really bad <laughs> impulse control. Um, but this is supposed to be the May box and my birthday's in May. So I was like, oh, that'll be fun. Like I'll get myself a little like late birthday present. And then it arrived so fast. So I'm filming this on Earth Day, actually. It's April 22nd. So it is an early birthday present now. <laughs> and I'm really excited. So I'm gonna unbox it and uh, maybe make some of the snacks. Eh? Okay, so it says, nice to meet you, let's have tea. That is my kind of greeting. All the best things are shared. Oh, that's really cute, actually. Uh, so this is pretty. It's a little note. It says, warm greetings to our Sakurako family. May marks the end of spring in Japan and the start of warmer days ahead, but May is also the month of one of my favorite Japanese holidays, Children's Day, on May 5th. They celebrate the children in our lives, and one way to express it is through mochi, which is the best, and also apparently a way to wish for healthy growth. So this is very cool. So that's the, the little note. I'm probably going to use it as a bookmark. Uh, and we got a whole booklet that explains, I think, all of the things that are in here. So that's good. Oh, and some more explanation around Children's Day. Oh, this is cool. So we have a fig dorayaki, a plum mochi, azuki warabi mochi, which is a type of mochi that I haven't seen before. I'll show you it when I get to it. Kinako mochi, Oh wow, there's actually a lot in here. Um, Rikishi Mochi Monaka. Mitarashi Mochi Monaka. So there's two different kinds of that and they have like a shell around it. And then the last one is fu Fukuruku Shiruko, which I think is some kind of, which looks to be some kind of like porridge but it also looks like those, you know the like um, hot chocolate balls that you've like put the whole thing in and then you pour hot milk over it and it turns into hot chocolate? It looks like that, but in blowfish porridge form, <laughs> which is so cute. Then moving on, we got some tea. I love tea. Oh, and m more things. There's a bowl and some cookies and I don't know what that is, but it looks good. Wow, wow, okay, there is so much going on here. Anyways, um, I'm gonna read that, the rest of it, instead of just the titles, off camera. But let's, let's do a little show. So this is the Plum Mochi. There are multiple little guys on there, and this is the kind of mochi that I'm more familiar with. The first job I ever had, um, one of the kids I worked with actually went on to become a chef, and he made us like lunch one day and mochi was the dessert and that's kind of how I fell in love with it. It was like homemade mochi. And then I like couldn't find it in my small town, of course. <laughs> so I tried to make it myself. And then when I moved into the city, suddenly there were like Asian food markets and I just loved life. So that's the kind of mochi I'm used to but there's a lot of other kinds to try and I'm very excited about it. So I think that this little package is the kind of mochi that I haven't tried before, which is the Azuki Warabi Mochi. And that's this one, I think. Ooh, this is the tea. It's very pretty tea. I get two. Love that. Then this is the porridge little guy. Ooh. I'm very impressed at how they package this because he is fully intact, this little fish fish friend. Kind of sounds like a maraca of some kind. That's fun. Ooh. 
So this is a little kind of a uh, cake mochi, which I don't think I saw in the in the booklet. Are you a bonus mochi? So this might be a bonus. It says, hope we could share our happiness. We wish you joy and peace. Little cake. I don't know what this is, but it looks like a cookie. And I'm about it. <laughs> then, okay, this is what I thought it was, which is the Sakura cream cookie sandwich. And there's two of them. They're very, very pretty. Kind of crumbly through the mail, so that's, whoops, poor little guys were at the bottom. Or no, these are the, oh goodness, I'm just going to have to, I'm just going to stop trying to match them up with what they are and just be happy that I have all of these snacks. So those look pretty good too. Then these are the wafery ones, other kinds of like cookie wafers. Probably made with rice flour, mochi flour stuff. And then, ooh. I don't know if that's supposed to be a fruit on the front or what, but yum. Let's see if I can open this without hurting it. All right, so this is the one that I was, I don't really, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm not more knowledgeable on this. I just bought it because like, it's very pretty and I love mochi, but I don't actually know that much about it beyond the kind that I've seen in stores in the US. So this one is the, Himesakura Kuzumochi. Uh, and it incorporates the delicate flavor of Sakura, this traditional sweet known for its beautiful translucency and soft texture. And it has roasted soy flour that you can put on top. Hmm. And it gives you a little like tasting recommendation to eat it with uh, the one on page 15, but the pages aren't numbered. So it says to pair that with these little guys, which is fresh, sweet, and slightly spicy soy sauce and sugar-based sauce on the inside. Ooh, very cool, very cool. Oof. Next, we've got these little guys. Which is something that I think I have tried before, maybe? And then this, which looks like it has red bean. Either paste or like actual beans in it. So that will be delicious. And then it also came with a little bowl to have the porridge in. So those are the snacks that I got in here. So I think I'm gonna make some tea and some porridge and do some reading. So see you in a minute. I made myself a little setup here. Kind of uh, picked this book just because it looks so pretty with the bugs and the flowers, but also because I just bought it and I love Sylvia Marina Garcia. I will buy whatever she puts out. Then we got the tea here. Uh, we have a lot of the little snacks. Probably only gonna eat the ones that are open, but those are just too pretty not to include. And I grabbed you guys now so that we could add some of the water to the porridge. Eh, actually wait, I wanna show off the fish before we do that. Just since he's not gonna be around after this. <laughs> Look at how cute he is. Alright, time to make them into food. Fish food?
Well, <laughs> the water kind of got everywhere. And it didn't make a hole the way I thought it was supposed to. But that's probably user error for, you know, not being able to read the instructions. Well, I got a spoon so we can try to dunk him, I guess. There we go. I wish the bowl weren't quite so dark so that like I could be sure that it was actually changing colors instead of... Oh, it's like pink. Interesting. All right, I'm gonna let that soak. And it says to stir with a uh, chopstick, so maybe that'll make it better. Hmm. Okay, be back in a minute. All right, got my little tray of treats here. Apparently I was supposed to make the hole in the top of the fish. So that's on me. Like I said, user error. But the bits on the inside got into the bowl, so that's good. Ooh, I'm finding, I got some red beans in here. And yep, there's the wafer, found it. So. There is the mochi and the red bean paste. And the other stuff that was inside the little fishy. So that should be good. So then what I'm actually reading, because I just, like I said in the little close up, I just purchased this book. So I'll talk about it more in like a, book haul kind of thing, but it's by Silvia Moreno Garcia, who I absolutely adore. Um, it could not be more stunning as a cover, and it just sounds so fun, like kind of Bridgerton-y, or like Gossip Girl-y, but set in either Low Sail or Lois Sail, I'm not sure. And people have magic. So our main character is telekinetic and struggles to control it. So her neighbors call her the witch of old house, but she's trying to join like high society. And then there's another, another magic person who comes to town who's an entertainer and he wants to help her control her power. And there's secrets and anyways, um, there's, isn't really about this because this is not what I'm reading yet, even though I really, really want to. So I'll probably start it very soon. I just thought it looked really nice with the uh, setup we got going here. Instead, what I'm actually reading is The Raven King. So this is book two of the All for the Game trilogy. And it is wild. It has big, like, K-drama energy. So I feel like this also goes together well, but the cover wasn't nearly as pretty as the beautiful ones. Yeah, I I feel like it exists in the world of a K-drama that involves the mafia or organized crime in some way because it doesn't feel like the world in which I live. <laughs> but it also has this sport that is made up by the author and it feels like a mix between lacrosse and um, like highlight with the aggression of ice hockey. And they play it in a locked arena, so it's like a plexiglass box that people can spectators can see in. But all of the all of the refs are on the outside of the box. So like you can really get some good punches in before they show up. And everyone seems to be really, really obsessed obsessed with the sport to the point where these college kids who are playing it are treated like K-pop stars <laughs> or like boy band members. It's like that kind of devotion. And yeah, there's just so much happens and there are so many trigger warnings, uh, which I've put on my Goodreads review and my Instagram post about it. So if you want to know more about the trigger warnings for book one at least, which I'm assuming will continue through the rest of the series, 
Um, you can find my thoughts there. It's definitely not an extensive list. You can also check the story graph, which I love so much because they allow users to assign their own trigger warnings um, and kind of like rank it, whether it's uh, something that happens a lot or if there's one or two instances of it. So stay safe, read what you wanna read. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself through books. But despite the fact that it's, um, there are parts of it that are <laughs> admittedly awful, it's also just a really quick kind of wild read. So I'm reading book two. I did, I read like a quarter of it yesterday and uh, we'll probably finish it this weekend. But uh, okay, I think everything has had time to kind of get mixed and there we go. So I'm gonna grab some of the fish, or the fishy casing, and also some of everything that was inside. Let's give this a try. Mm. I mean, it's definitely tasty. I think the casing isn't really breaking up as easily as I would have expected. But again, that could be my fault for not putting the hole in the fish myself. Um, maybe I added too much water, but yeah, it's good. It's tasty. I don't have enough uh, red bean flavoring in my life. So then we're gonna go with uh, this little bit of mochi, which is got, I think, sugar on the outside. Um, also, everything was actually in the booklet, just two of the pages have gotten stuck together. So I have information on other things. Mmm. That's really tasty. Is that sesame seed? Okay, so that is Kanten Sakura Mochi. Combination of agar, gelatin, uh, mochi, has the irresistible chewy texture to complement the Sakura flavor. Okay, so apparently Sakura, to me, tastes like, tastes like sesame, which is very tasty. So that is a, a big success in my book. Then I'm gonna go with this, yes, uh, Rikishi Moshi, Mochi Monaka, which is <laughs> apparently for people who have a sumo-like hunger. It, apparently sumo wrestlers are said to eat mochi to build their strength, so that's pretty cool. And then this is a Monaka wafer sandwich filled with mochi and 100% Hokkaido grown red bean. So I was just saying I need more red bean in my life, so that is kind of perfect. Here's the design. Poor little cookie did get a little bit smooshed in travel on one side, but it's just gonna get eaten anyways. Mmm. That makes me happy. <laughs> That's really tasty. When the waiver is kind of dry, so it's the perfect time to try the tea. And this is just a Sakura Sencha. And it's like a very nice bright green, which I think you probably saw at the uh, flyover that I did. So. I love tea. I don't drink a lot of green tea though. I should definitely drink more of that. Mm. Yeah, this box is a big hit for me so far. And then we're gonna go to the, was this the plum mochi, I believe. 
Yes, so this is a plum mochi. So it's a sour plum jam from Wakayama Prefecture for the filling. And a bit of marshmallow. Oh my goodness. Squishy. That's like the best thing I've ever, I've ever eaten. I love it so much. Um, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to get more of this stuff. <laughs> so that's just kind of a, you know, unboxing taste test of a couple things. Talking about the books that I'm currently reading. I'm gonna eat the rest of it off camera. And, um, get to reading because this feels really precarious I'm not gonna lie mm. Mm. I'm really happy with this early birthday present to myself so I'll leave the like link down below I think you can probably still get this one depending on how quickly I edit this and get it up or you can sign up for months to come uh I only signed up for one month just because like if you get a little bit of crockery every month, I feel like that is going to um, add up. And I already have like a lot of a lot of mugs and stuff in my kitchen. So as much as I would love to just get it every month, I also know myself and I won't get rid of any of it. In any case, thanks for tuning in for this uh, a little bit of a different video for me. I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless, and I'll see you guys at some point soon. Bye!